All right, welcome everybody. Top of the hour, uh, 11 a.m. on the East Coast, 8 a.m. on the West. Uh, we are here for episode nine of our 20 for 2020 uh, educational webinars. Today's topic is NFPA 1851. We're gonna talk about a little bit about the standard on selection, care, and maintenance of PPE for structural firefighting and proximity firefighting. So the rundown for today, we're gonna to do an introduction. Uh, I'll let you, uh, let you guys know who I am. Uh, I know many of you have probably joined us before for these uh, webinars. So I thank you for uh, joining us again. And for those of you, if this is your first time, welcome. I think you'll find this uh, very beneficial. Um, we're gonna tackle the objective. I like to keep these concise and highly focused, and that's exactly what we're gonna to do today. And then uh, for those of you new to the emergency reporting family or interested in joining it, um, we're gonna give you a quick background on ER, on the system features, and then we'll jump into PPE management in total. We'll go back one before we do the introduction. So today's objective is how can I improve my agency's critical responsibility of PPE management that truly adheres to NFPA 1851? We're going to talk about NFPA 1851 here in just a moment. Before we do that, I've got a few questions for you guys. First of all, I'd like to know who's with us today. So there's a poll up on the screen right now. Are you interested in becoming an ER customer and joining our ER family, or are you currently an ER customer? And this will also help drive how much time we spend on the, the background of the system and uh, the features. All right, almost everybody's voted. Closing the poll in three, two, one. All right, looks like we got everybody's a customer today. So I'm gonna, the next couple slides after my intro slide is gonna be pretty quick. But I have a couple more questions for you. I'm gonna keep this interactive today. What type of agency do you all work for? So are you a career department, a volunteer, combo, or if DOD federal? All right, you guys are quick today. I'm gonna to close the poll in three, two, one. All right, we got a nice mix today. All across the board, career, volunteer, and a little uh, majority of a combo, so fantastic. Okay, so this, I think we're gonna have a really good conversation today about 1851 and as it pertains to your different agencies. So thank you for that, but we're not quite done yet. We'll get these out of the way because I'm really curious. So thinking about your organization now, now, not just you personally, because you're here and you would answer one way, but if you were to ask the members of your organization this question, dirty turnouts are an indication of a true firefighter, the dirtier the better, or an unacceptable exposure to known carcinogens. Now, I know what you all would answer. What would your department answer? Because culturally, this is a big deal. I think we're, move, we've, we're moving very rapidly in the right direction, but there, I think there. I, I truly think there are still some that think that dirty helmets and dirty gear are a badge of honor, and that certainly was the case when I started. Um, I spent 22 years in the fire service. Right, we got everybody voting. Okay, here we go. So again, organizationally, all of you would have answered the second. So check this out. So about a third are. Uh, looking at their organization, doing a little introspection on their organization and realize, okay, we have people that think dirty dirty turnouts are the way to go. I think I'm gonna be able to help you convince them that that's not the case um, as we go through today's presentation. Awesome, and then one last question. So, and be honest here, does your department follow NFPA 1851? Now, I wanna preface this before you answer. Adhering to NFPA standards are difficult. You've heard 1710, 1720, 1500. What I'm looking for is, do you have policies and procedures in place that, that adhere to 1851? Do you have nothing, or do you not have anything in writing? Or we kind of do it, we have some documentation, we're working to get better, or what the heck's NFPA 1851? All right, let you think about it. A couple more people, time to vote on Three, two, one. Right on, everybody vote. Outstanding, thank you. So this is interesting. So if you add up the little pink and the purple, we're in a good spot. We're over 50% of you are doing something. 
some of you are like, what, a, what is an FP 1851? And that's okay. So I remember test going testing for both firefighter for, you know, for firefighter one, firefighter two, my academy officer, BC testing, and they bombard us with these NFPA standards. And it's hard to have mnemonics with these four digit numbers or three digit numbers that NFPA has. So don't, don't worry too much about the number. We're going to be able to show you where to find these and uh, know which standard you should be working with. But 1851 is the one we're going to focus on on PPE. So we're, in a, we're, we're doing good in a lot of ways. And then hopefully after today's session, those of you in the green and the purple here, and certainly the yellow, can go back to your organizations, take a leadership role, and gradually, because we don't always accept change rapidly in the fire service, if ever, in many ways. And so you can go back with some knowledge and facts um, and a standard to enhance your organization in general. And I think um, as we go through today's uh, presentation, you'll have some of that to go with you. And the fact that you use, you already have, and can all of your customers using our system, the fact that you're already using a tool that's going to help you adhere to a good chunk of what's in an FPA 1851. So thanks for uh, answering all those questions. And a quick introduction about me. Uh, those of you that uh, attended these, you know I spent 22 years in the fire service in southern Arizona, retired as a battalion chief. Uh, I also have used emergency reporting since 2004. I uh, was an, a DOD trainer uh, in a regional, then DOD, then international, uh, starting in 2011. Um, uh, served as a couple other roles with emergency reporting between that time and now, and I currently serve as a business development analyst, uh, working with our sales team as a subject matter expert, as well as key accounts, uh, working with key account customers, and uh, then uh, working with uh, some subject matter expertise on uh, webinars like today. So, kind of uh, an all-around good guy doing lots of lots of things. Uh, just got back yesterday, and I want to thank you all too because if you had registered, uh, you probably initially registered for the webinar being yesterday, but I was traveling from Washington, D.C., back home uh, early, early this morning around 1 a.m., and uh, so thank you for uh, rearranging your schedules to attend today on a Friday. Typically, these are on Thursdays, so thank you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go past these, but just know um, we are growing like crazy. Um, we're making changes to the system like crazy, and uh, a lot of times if you have feature requests or things you'd like in the system, make sure you visit our community forum where you can do the feature request and that's accessible through the support button because our product owners look at these and uh, look at those feature requests and take them into consideration as they plan uh, the product the part of the system we call them product owners think of them as like module managers they basically oversee the development team for particular parts of the system uh, we are we do really great with a lot of agency compliance when it pertains to NFP standards, hence this uh, series of webinars, which we're trying to focus on different NFPA standards and how emergency reporting can help you succeed in adhering to them with as little a pain as possible. Got 16 modules, over 600 reports, as you all have uh, discovered. And we are rolling out um, your, everybody on our commercial side. So we have commercial, uh, which is what most of you are on, since I don't have any federal customers with us today. And then we have our ultra secure. So if you have the privileges in the analytics module, you will now see a new business intelligence tool. It's the initial release. There's a lot more to come in the months ahead, but definitely take a look at analytics and then navigate over to, our, um, you'll see a response, safety, and then uh, BI basic. Uh, so take a look at that and it's our new data visualization tool, um, a very powerful tool and it's only going to get better in the months ahead. Okay, so I want to talk about safety analytics and NFPA 1500, um, even though today is 1851. There is a gauge called PPE. Now, if you go to safety analytics, I suspect that most of you will just have two gauges. The rest are uh, disabled. Um, this is an upgrade for sure, but the PPE gauge is a little bit about what we're going to talk about today, and I will be showing you a best practice example. Um, I've got permission from this customer to share with you um, how great a job they are doing with uh, managing their PPE, which is all about a NFP 1851. And then, of course, there's a lot of discussion in the foundational document, NFPA 1500, which is the uh, overall guide for um, 
basically fire department safety. All right, but today we are going to focus on 1851. And it is the standard on selection, care, and maintenance of PPE for structural firefighting and proximity firefighting. So I grabbed some screenshots. So I apologize for the heavy text here, but I, I took some screenshots from the latest standard, which is the 2020 edition of NFPA 1851. And when you're building your 1851 plan and communicating that, and again, a suggestion that I have that I've always found effective is if those of you, especially if you don't have anything in writing or have just a little bit in writing, is to make sure, and again, it might be common sense, but again, if it were so common, we wouldn't be talking about the, off the, the frequent lack of it out there, but be sure to include participation from the from the boot firefighter all the way on up to the chief in developing this. It's so vital today. We are so aware of the exposure to carcinogens, cancer prevention awareness, cancer presumptive laws in each state. And so a lot of what's going to take place, and you can read the literature out there and the, the articles on the different you know, fire department news sites, Fire Rescue One, Firehouse, and so forth. But because of these presumption laws, because of the, the need to often make the case for those exposures, lawyers are going to be looking at these national standards. And so, they, you know, they seem initially kind of intimidating to read and like, oh, there's no, no pictures. I like pictures. I'm a firefighter. I want pictures in my, in my, in my reading. But if you look at um, the details and take them one section, one chunk at a time, you're going to see some incredibly good tools that's going to save you pain and heartache as far as developing it because the NFPA has already done it. They've laid the foundation for you. And so looking at the left side of the page, you'll see routine inspection. 6.2.1, individual members shall conduct a routine inspection of their PPE upon issue at the beginning of each duty period and after each use. And then at a minimum, and it goes through all these sections, coat and trouser shall be inspected for the following. So how are you documenting this? All right, and I'm going to show you that here, um, how you can do it in our system. And then I just brought over on the right there, they break it down by the different pieces of the ensemble. So you got coat and trousers, so turn out coat, turn out pants. You've got the hood, and so there's a, there's a couple other items, loss of face opening, adjustment, seam integrity. So when, you're at, when, when you go to the troops and go, okay, we need you to inspect your turnout, they're going to shrug their shoulders and like, well, it's clean, there's no rips, there's no tears looks good to me. This gives you specificity on how to show them what they should be looking for and what they should be documenting. It's laid out for you. It makes it easy. And you can see that, you know, it's, they, they kind of know, okay, my, my hood's all stretched out. You know, it doesn't keep it, you know, keep my, right. It's always, it's stretched out and it's maybe worn or saturated and um, we just need a new one. All right. But they can specifically document based on the standard. Then you've got your helmets. All right, that's always a big one. Helmets, boy, don't even don't ever talk about European style helmets in the American Fire Service. Boy, they'll they'll have your head. But I'll tell you, they are no pun intended. Um, but they are um, they are actually pretty cool helmets. And in some ways, I would argue maybe safer. But that's probably blasphemy to many of you. But again, checking them is right here. And then gloves and so forth. Then the next thing, and this is where we excel in helping you, the documentation of all of it. So this is just part of the section. I am going to go to the standard here momentarily, but I wanted to show you, do you have right now, if I were to come visit your department, or God forbid there's an incident where someone is either injured or killed, and I need to see that, P, that, that, that firefighter's PPE from the time you took it out of the package to today's incident? And I need to know, do you have all of this documented? Do you have all of those routine inspections, the cleanings documented? Uh, would you be able to produce that? And the good news is, if you're using ER, many of you are probably nodding your head, yeah, I can do that. Those of you that are here to learn how to do it in emergency reporting, you know, next time we visit, you will probably be going, yep, we've got this down. But again, documentation and data management is not the sexy part of being in the fire service. None of us joined up to be data managers. But really, from, a, from the brand new firefighter on up to the chief, we are data managers, whether it's a small part of our job 
or it's basically all we do, you know, at the chief at the chief level uh, in many cases, um, it's a critical element. And combining this NFPA standard with what any emergency reporting can do, you can say with confidence that you're following NFPA 1851 as close as possible. Here's one that's in the standard that I don't believe was in the previous standard, I could be mistaken, but in the 2020 standard, notice 4.5.1 here, protecting the public and personnel from exposure to contaminated PPE. Do you all have a written SOP? And NFPA calls them at standard operating policies. I know we in my department, we had both policies, which are less flexible, guidelines, which are SOGs, which are um, basically kind of a best practice, what you could do in most instances. So these are truly policies. So what do you have in place that minimizes the public's and your personnel's exposure to soiled or contaminated structural gear? All right, then you've got, again, 4.5.2 shall require that protective ensembles shall not be worn or stored in the living areas of fire department facilities. I've seen in departments, mine included, no PPE beyond this point. I know, and you guys are probably have done this too. Oh, we, we have our turnouts on, we walk into the kitchen, day room, and uh, don't think anything of it. Those days are gone. PPE stay out in the bay, out in preferably out in the uh, in your turnout room if you have the luxury of having them, or a turnout rack away from diesel exhaust if possible. And then the public shall not be exposed at any time except during emergency operations to soiled or potentially contaminated PPE. So let me mention something here. And again, I'm going back from my experience. Emergency operations, we are talking about emergency operations where turnouts are required. If you are like we were at times, you know, call goes out in the middle of the night for an EMS call. We just throw our bunker pants on and no coat, but we throw our bunker pants on and trudge into a home and take care of Mrs. Smith. Again, those days are gone too. No turnouts, period, unless you're going to fight fire or go into an environment that requires PPE. So keep that in mind. And again, if anybody asks, well, why can't I wear my turnouts on EMS calls? 4.5.3 is the reason right there. But they're clean, they'll say. Doesn't matter. Uh, clean or not, there's, they're all, they're, once they've been contaminated, they're gonna get clean based on the standard here but they're not ever brand new clean with no 100% uh, no zero uh, carcinogens um, embedded somewhere in those threads. So something to keep in mind as we move forward and as you enhance, which is the goal, really, this is a process. So you're gonna enhance your PPE management in a step-by-step -step process, in an incremental process. You know, things don't happen overnight, but as you, as you work on your SOPs, as you work on making the case based on the standard, your department, your firefighters will be safer, they'll have a healthy career, and we hope a long and healthy retirement as well. And at the same token, looking at this one, you'll be protecting the public as well. All right, so let's jump in right away. Before we proceed, does anyone have any questions? Okie doke. All right, so before we go into the system, I wanna show you, and if you check the chat, you should see a link that will take you to this page. If you have not visited this, you're gonna to wanna to take some time here. Now, I took that link will take you directly to 1851. Now, if your department has a subscription to NFPA, you should be able to access um, or either have hard copies or digital copies of the standard. But if you just want to peruse the standard, NFPA does provide free access. Click on free access. Now we're gonna look at the current edition. Click view, and you are going to get a, a window that allows you to browse, and of course I need to refresh for some reason. You, will, you are able to browse the standard at no cost. You know, you can't mark it up, you can't download it, you know, you can't print it, but you can review it. And then, of course, hopefully you'll have a membership where you can then go in and, and, and work with this and help develop your SOPs and SOGs. And so this is actually, it's extremely well written, very explicit. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, if, like you like it's easy to do with any of these standards, remember, you've got it broken down by chapter, take it bit by bit and realize that 
it's very hard to adhere 100% to many of these standards, but the fact that you're moving in that direction is often sufficient in any kind of legal case that you are then working towards uh, being as close to NFPA 1851 compliant as possible. So let's jump right in. The key place to start in emergency reporting is right here in the maintenance module. In organizing your PPE, now you're going to see here I've got these categories that have a red shield. These, these shields appear and these categories appear when you have Safety Analytics Premier that includes the PPE um, gauge. What I want you to know, and I'm gonna show you both, you don't necessarily, we would love for you to have the, the Safety Analytics with the PPE component, but you don't have to have it to still effectively manage your PPE. You can go down here and just create a PPE category, and I probably don't have one in this, this test account, but you can create a category, and then you're gonna create subcategories that reflect the ensemble, okay? So what I want you to see here, just at a glance, all right? I have a red triangle here. It's telling me what? Somewhere in this category, I'll collapse it again, I have a piece of equipment out of service. Anytime you see the red warning triangle with an exclamation mark, it's indicative of something in that category is out of service. Now here, I have two pieces of equipment that aren't assigned to anybody, it's not very, again, as a demo account, it gets a little messy, but again, imagine if these were like turnout codes. They really need to be moved into the structural code category, subcategory. So what I would do, and this is showing you a, what we call a bulk operation. So say I need to clean this up. I goofed and I put it in the category and not the subcategory. I can check these two and the bulk operation uh, panel will appear at the bottom. I will click edit. I will then move them to the PPE subcategory and then into the structural, say their coats, structural coats subcategory. I'm not changing the ownership of both of them. I could, I need to do that individually. They're in service. I want to save two items and you will see that the, the table will redraw, the grid will redraw, and those two pieces will appear here. So organizing this, you're probably wondering, well, why do I have it say structural coat, structural boots, structural gloves, and so forth? If you have wildland gear, you may have a wildland helmet or wildland pants, wildland shirts. You can put them all under the PPE category and then have subcategories for each piece of equipment. It's important here that this describes what the equipment is, not where it is or who it's assigned to. All right, again, thinking back to NFP 1851 and all that they need to have documented. So let's go take a look at a coat. We'll look at Trey's coat. It's a currently out of service. Got a major repair. There's a tear in the left arm. Okay, it's assigned to ER. I guess we're in the turnout business now, <laughs> but it's not scheduled yet. So it's out of service, red, warning triangle. And because it's not scheduled and it's a major repair, it's showing red text as well. But before we jump into um, documenting repairs, we need to go look at that piece of equipment itself. These are the fields and you get to make, well, in this category, you don't with, with the safety analytics, but you can choose which of these fields are required fields whenever you add a new piece of equipment to a subcategory or subcategory. And you can see is if we went back, let me do it real quick here, just to, in, it has to be documented. Let me just show you real quick. So all, a lot of these elements that you see here, person to whom the element is issued, okay? Date and condition when issued, manufacturer model name or design, month and date of manufacture, and so forth, okay? So that's all there. And then they correspond to these fields here. So you're probably saying, well, that's a lot to enter. Keep in mind, these, this information is all importable, okay? It's, and so in an import template, which, you ha which is our, the equipment is 
let me see, I gotta make sure I get this right. The equipment I believe is customer facing. Oh man, my brain today. So if you navigate to, so say you ordered a batch of 20 pieces of equipment. You know, you got 20 coats, 20 pants, you got a spreadsheet for it. Go to admin. You're gonna have this equipment import. Download the template. And basically take that documentation and enter it into the spreadsheet. And then you can import it so you don't have to manually hand jam each of those pieces, uh, new pieces of equipment. This is especially helpful when you order them in batches. Obviously, one offs where you're getting a single replacement, you know, it's just faster to enter it individually. But I want you to see that the fields are all here. You will get to determine, unless you're using this category, these are determined for you. The little red asterisk, um, you can determine what fields are required when you enter it. So if I were to enter this manually, I could not finish the entry of this piece of equipment until I, I put in values in each of those fields. One of the other key things to keep in mind is the ownership. All right, now typically when you're issued turnouts, you're measured for them, for that person, for the NFPA standard, you're measured for them, they're your turnouts. But people leave departments, people come and go, you can edit that ownership. So don't go in and create a new turnout, okay, code. Simply edit that ownership, and because it's PPE in the ownership table here, just have it issued, because it may be, he may be on engine 151, and you know, it's in the cab, but we really don't need that here. Simply assign it to a personnel, and then if I want to change it, so now let's take, say Trey left the department and Dave's about the same size as Trey, we're reassigning it to Dave. Well, we can see Adam's left and Carpenter needed a new code. So we'll go back to that, we'll send it back to Trey. Okay, but you can document all of that. You click change. And then one of the things that will show you is the ownership history here. So you will have an electronic paper trail whenever ownership is changed on a piece of equipment. This is documentation that, God forbid, something were to happen to your someone in your organization and they want the records of your PP, you will have 100% outstanding documentation from who owned it, okay, that's all here. Now here you got this add file before I move on. I highly recommend that you can upload either the invoice you can upload the owner's manual, the PDF of the owner's manual, whatever you think is valuable here, put it there. A lot of times people will put the invoice, okay? And then any other notes that you might need to add. So we'll save that, okay? And now it's time to document. So looking back on what we had talked about earlier, all of the elements of 1851 in tracking this piece of equipment, we want to go in and do a, an inspection. So you're going to click on the gear here, add maintenance request. And you can grant, so just so you know, in, in the permissions, you can grant permissions that will allow people to request, assign, and schedule, and complete. It's up to you and your organization how you want this documented. Do you want them to just request and assign, or do you want them to be able to do their own PPE and click click complete and fully document it. And so that'll be up to you um, and how you wanna do it or do you require someone of a higher rank to be able to complete it? So what can be done? It's this simple, we click on complete. All right, because we're doing it right now. We just checked our turnouts for today. All right, again, per 1851, we're gonna go in, requested now, maintenance type. You probably will ask, are these all, can I change these? Um, we do get that question a lot. These are all hard-coded. We try to cover just about everything, and so we have a routine inspection, okay? And we can put in here, we're gonna go down to complete, who completed it, so hopefully that person that owns that turnout. We'll go past all the fuel components here. It says it's out of service, but we fixed it so it's back in service. All right, it passed. Now typically, I'm gonna do this so I can show you what changes here on the grid, but keep in mind that 
typically that change of status will be once that piece of equipment is repaired. In fact, we'll do it the right way. We'll keep it out of service. We'll go back. I'll, go, I'll show you how to manage a, a repair. We'll skip past the cost. Notes. Okay. If there is any, add file. All right. Now we, we will check pass for this one because this is a, well, trust me on this. It just pretend it's in service, but we'll go pass because it passed the daily inspection, the routine inspection. I can put any notes here. Um, so we can say maybe reflective striping beginning to fade. All right, just as a heads up, click complete and close. All right, now here's another thing our system allows you to do is that if you probably won't do this for your turnout because uh, your daily inspections of turnouts, because then somebody will be getting bombarded with emails. But say it's a repair, say it's a more comprehensive uh, quarterly, monthly inspection, you can actually email this to someone within the organization, that person's supervisor, your PPE um, uh, lead firefighter or uh, PPE manager uh, of, the, of the department. And let them know that it, that was completed and put in any other messages. Maybe put in, hey, heads up, uh, reflective striping is going to be starting to wear out, um, may need a repair soon. Then you can send that email. Okay, so that's done. And then I want to show you here this icon is the electronic paper trail of everything that's been done to that piece of equipment. Hopefully there is one maintenance item here we would add when we first take delivery of it. So let's say we took delivery of it back in 2018. So this is, we just took it out of the package. We're gonna call it other. All right, maybe we assigned it to somebody. We load the invoice here, click complete and close. And so what would happen, it was completed on this date, so I would have to change the completed date. But basically it would show up in chronological order from the time we took it out of the package and every single thing that was done to that turnout. So you can see we stitched the left, left arm, we did a test, clean post fire. And remember that's one of the things in the standard after use, so after a fire, did we inspect and clean it? All right, so I'm gonna close that, but it's still showing out of service. Why? Because we have a tear in the left arm. So we're gonna go in and we got that done. I'm gonna click over here on the icon, the edit icon. We're gonna, we're gonna complete it. Completed by the vendor. It's now back in service. It passed. We got some parts, we got some labor, not that much. Again, just putting some numbers in here. Image, uh, the repair, maybe the before and after image of the repair. We're gonna complete and close it. I'm gonna send that off to my boss, my supervisor, or my PPE manager. And now you can see it is back in service and we have nothing out of service in that category, nothing out of service in, in turnout coats, structural coats, and we are now good to go. But of course, that maintenance history is all set right here. So what we have just done with a single piece of PPE is adhere to those a good chunk of those elements that I mentioned earlier as far as routine inspections in NFP 1851, and then any kind of maintenance or cleaning of NFP 1851. Any questions so far on how to manage this? Let me take a look here. All right, looking, looking good. Okay, so we'll clear there, we'll refresh the page. Get our grid back, okay. Still have some boots and hoods out of service. So when you're building this, whether it is the safety analytics category and the subsequent subcategories, or just down in the regular categories and subcategories, be very specific on your ensembles, okay? So it's very easy to find.
And don't forget up here at the top, the ability to search. If I wanna see everything owned by Trey, I can see that just by typing in his name. Okay, take advantage of your search fields to refine this grid, to see any pending maintenance as well. All right, so now, as we look into it, I want to take show you a step and another step advanced step into managing these, these P, this PPE. We have this button here called assign PPE. If you look into your account, you many of you, some of you might have it, but if you don't, don't, don't worry. It's only because it will appear only when you have the full safety analytics package. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to jump into an account. Again, I have permission here to show you this. Uh, my friend in uh, South Korea at our base, Camp Humphreys, um, south of Seoul, he does an incredible job with safety analytics in general, but with his PPE in particular. And so I want to show you a best practice example of how he has set this up. And maybe you can get some ideas on how you may want to do it in your department, even if you don't have the safety analytics, but I do want to show you how he's done it using the safety analytics. I hope it logs in for me, please log in. Well, that is most peculiar. Take a peek here, maybe we'll try a different browser. Hang in there with me, everybody. It's only because we're doing a webinar that it's not logging me in. There we go. Safari is misbehaving. Okay, so what I wanna show you here first and foremost is this. In analytics, and we've got the 10 gauges on our pump panel. This is spectacular, this PPE gauge right here. So let me see if I can get a... Okay, so here, what this is telling me at a glance is that 97% of my assigned PPE and personnel are in fully compliant. What does that mean? They have had their annual NFPA test, they have had their routine inspection, everything's in service, and they're not. it's not past its replacement date. Remember, replacement date is one of the things NFPA 1851 wants you to track. So I can see here that I have one firefighter that sh if he's in the black, should not be fighting fire. Why? Either he's out of service, a piece of his ensemble is out of service, past its replacement date, or it's not a complete ensemble. The red, maybe he just forgot to check his gear, okay? So it's missing a routine or advanced inspection, and it doesn't have an, or it doesn't have an NFPA annual test within the last year. But 78% of his people are good to go. This is an exceptional example of how they're taking advantage of these, this, uh, this tool to keep their crews safe in all aspects of the organization. But today we are focused primarily on PPE. So what feeds this gauge? Let me show you. Again, back in maintenance. We've got the PPE category. And so he broke it out by shifts. You don't need to do this because that's gonna be under the ownership, but he wanted to do it, he had a reason for it. So again, you, this is not required to break it this way, but look at the title, turnout boots and so forth. Okay, so he's broken it out and you can see the assignments here. So if I wanna see everything assigned to my buddy, Mr. Che, okay. Now he's he's an admin, so he doesn't have everything. He doesn't have PP anymore, so we'll try. This firefighter, I can see at a glance everything assigned to that person, everything. Okay, now one of the things that either that firefighter can do or the person supervising him can do on the check is I can go in here and I can basically check all in that in that in the PP category and I can actually add a single maintenance record 
I, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to complete it, but I want to show you. And basically go in and do my routine inspection that will apply to all these pieces of equipment at once. So I have to go into each piece of equipment to do it because I checked them all together today after, after shift change. So take advantage of that bulk operation functionality here. Okay. Now, under assigned PPE right here, he's broken this down. So we'll go to, I want to go to, that was the, uh, the A shift turnouts. Okay. So what did I do here? All right. Let's take a look at Mr. On. This is all of his gear. It's in service. It had a last regular inspection on the 31st, last annual NFP inspection, the big one where you just not just look at it, make sure it's good. You're looking at it, you know, with the fine tooth comb, basically. And, and again, when I say fine tooth comb, I use that loosely because what a comprehensive inspection looks like is all detailed in 1851. It's not due to be replaced until this date. So he's good to go. Not a single piece of item is red here. If I need to go take a look at that piece of equipment, all I have to do is click on this link. We'll do a look at his jacket. Uh -huh. it, the grid did an auto filter, but that's okay. We can just look at, in this case, we'll just click the first one here for boots and look at this paper trail, okay? I say paper, but it's an electronic paper trail, all right? They've got their routine inspection, advanced inspection, all documented here. Let's see if they've documented any cleaning. You're not always cleaning boots per se. So we'll collapse that and we're gonna go into the jackets. The test and the monthly turnout, not sure hydros hydrostatic test, but they've got the monthly turnout and the documentation. So again, it's the documentation. I am going to show you reports um, coming up here in a second um, that you can pull per person and per, per inspection type, per maintenance type, I should say. All right, so we'll do that here in a little bit. Um, but before, I want to, we need to go back to how you build this. And so what I want to show you quickly is we have the set settings. He has basically created a PPE list. So in this case, he's created the A-shift a turnouts. What he's saying is that in that NFP or in that NFPA 1500 maintenance category called PPE, he has all of these subcategories. Remember that. And so for this ensemble, the only subcategories that apply are the ones he's checked. He clicks save, and then from there, he can add people to that to that list. Whoa. Yikes, Chrome, what you doing? Okay, had people, that didn't, wow. So normally this is nice and organized and looks very clean and structured. Why it's not, I don't know. It's misbehaving today only because we're in a demo. So that's where you add people that have that particular ensemble that you've created. And then as it's managed, it's managed, you know, throughout the, in, in the maintenance module. And then um, you can see at a glance the status, and then you can see the high level look back here in the, in the safety analytics in the PPE gauge. So everything in that table and in that, that module in the PPE category is feeding the data, that's feeding its data to this gauge to let you know the state of your equipment. And so if I click here, I can see Mr. Pock. And this will take, what's wrong here? Oh, his boots, they're past its replacement date. So with a couple clicks, I can find out what's going on. Oh, we forgot the document. We issued him his boots. We just forgot to document it. So we would to retire these boots, add the new boots, and he'll be good to go. All right, so I've got a question from Sean. Let me pull that up here. Sean, thank you for asking the question. Is there a way to apply an inspection maintenance record to all items of a single ensemble by filling out one maintenance record, or do we need to add maintenance records for each item individual, individually? 
great question. I hope I covered that um, before, and, and maybe I, you answered, asked that question before I covered it. So here, back in equipment, and I, now I can't do it here in the assigned PP. That is just telling you the state of the equipment. But here, if say I wanted to get my crew, okay, so, Let's see how he's broken it down. So he's got a pieces of equipment that's assigned to a person. So the, the smart money would be to go per person and do your bulk operation, add that maintenance record, and you can you can tackle all that entire ensemble as you're asking with one maintenance what's with a bulk operation instead of going one at a time because that gets pretty tedious fast. And so take advantage of that bulk operation, especially when you're doing those routine inspections on your entire turnout ensemble. Does that answer? Oh, good. Sean says, perfect. Yep, you're absolutely right. You figured correctly, Sean. Awesome. Okay, so as we get near the end here, I wanna show you some reports. And again, I'm gonna show you some live account reports because those are gonna be much more meaningful than a demo account. These reports I want you to take a look at and maybe even jot them down, make them your favorites. All right, we're gonna go look at equipment and maintenance history for assigned personnel for category, for subcategory, for maintenance, for date range. It's a mouthful, but I love a report when there's a lot of the fours in it, F-O-R, because that means filter, 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 filter. I know this is a killer report. I love this one. So I wanna see this year, I want to go to PPE. I'm gonna go all subcategories in PPE, and I wanna see, we'll just pick Mr. On, all the maintenance types. What I am doing right here is creating a report that shows everything done to his PPE so far this year. All right, now there's a lot to look at here, but you've got the maintenance date, the type. Now, if they documented the type, the title, cost if anything, but main inspections typically don't have a cost and that's okay, but repairs do, who did it and its status. Okay, and so this is the report that if something happens, you've got complete record of that PPE. Now again, I can just go down to say, I wanna see my entire department and I just wanna see uh, coats. And we're going to go to uh, all personnel. And I just want to see my repairs. I don't know if there'll be anything here. Probably not for 2020, but maybe 2019. So this is all my A shift coats, any repairs. So it looks like they're in pretty good shape. So let's go to all. I just want to see if there's anything here just to show you guys if they're doing any repairs. Nope. Apparently they're in good, their gear's in good shape, okay? So, uh, but it will show you that um, if you wish to to, uh, to display that. Now, things that are out of service, for example, another, 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 um, actually, I always, so one of the things, a little trick here, when you're in the module, click on reports when you're in the module itself and it breaks it breaks everything down by kind of subcategories. So apparatus list, maintenance history for apparatus, equipment list. And then we do have one that if I remember right, it's in the wrong spot. Yes, equipment out of service time. So this one really needs to go down here. Um, but equipment out of service, if you wanna track when things were in and out of service, how long was a piece of equipment out of service? Now, I don't know how if they're documenting this fully, but we'll run it anyway. If they take things in and out of service, you can see how long any given piece of equipment was out of service. So from the time it was taken out, now you're granted, you give them a loaner, but if you take a piece of turnout gear out of, out of service, it time stamps it, time and date stamps it, then you put it back in service, time and date stamps it, gives you the elapsed time, and then it basically adds it up for every single time that it's in and out of service. And so you can see, hey, again, for turnouts, it's probably less of an issue because you're using a replacement, um, uh, switch out you know, a set of gear, but nonetheless, it's um, it's 
um, a way to see, okay, this gear is always out of service because it's ripping or it's falling apart or whatnot. And so you can track that here and show this is particularly great for equipment like your your trucks and other parts of uh, your your vehicles and such uh, other other equipment that you're using. But I did want to show it to you um, here. So those are just uh, two examples of reports. And then that's the maintenance history. But say you just want to do a report uh, on on an annual basis on, okay, you're responsible for this gear. Do you have all your gear still? Okay, that's this one right here. Do, do, do. We're gonna go to, so we've got the maintenance history, but I want assigned equipment for personnel for category and subcategory. This is report 1155. So we'll click on that. We're gonna go to PPE, all categories. And I want to see everything assigned to Mr. On. And there's his gear and the cost of it assigned to him. So that's kind of his checklist to make sure everything assigned that that has been documented assigned to him is in, is in his is in his possession. Now you're probably saying, well, he doesn't have access to the this report. True, not everybody has access to the reports module in your organization. All they have to do is click on my profile one of our other modules, click on my equipment, and it will show you all the equipment assigned to that person. He can see at a glance, anytime he logs into emergency reporting, all of the all of equipment, regardless, portable radios, PPE, whatever is assigned to him and he's responsible for, will show up here on this table. It's essentially that report in an uneditable, or a non, really just a tabular format in a, in a basic table. All right, we are coming up to the end here, but I've got a couple more questions I want to answer. Okay. Does the inspection sheet ask specific questions or will this fall back to an inspection policy, coat, pants, boots, and et cetera? Yes. And so that's another thing to keep in mind, Stephen. So we are actually looking at doing, you know, we have our rig checks where you can have specific checks for Part the, the cabs of the truck and the, the cabs, the compartments of the truck uh, and go through a full on truck check. Um, we are looking into possibly having some of that functionality to where you can have a checklist per piece of equipment, such as the specific questions you're looking for. So right now, the smart money would be to um, in that particular check is to, if you do it electronically, PDF, uh, form fillable PDF, or even paper, which we're trying to get away from, um, you can certainly uh, upload that to that maintenance item. So what that would look like, and what you saw is correct, that, that simple pass fail. Let me go here, back to the, okay, so what would happen? Um, great question, so we're gonna go here, and we'll refresh. Okay, so we're gonna go and we wanted to check this coat. So what could happen, it's up to you department policy-wise. You can put in there um, per department checklist, everything passed, or you can actually upload the checklist here. And again, if you've done it electronically, it's a real simple upload, and then it will be tied to that maintenance request. So. If I heard, if I'm reading into it a little bit, um, having that checklist part of the check itself is something you'd probably like. Oops, something that you'd probably like to see. Is that right, Stephen? And I'll definitely pass that on to our product owner because um, that has been a recent request from other customers as well. And then, of course, yes, you can do the simple pass fail on here. Whoops, on the complete, you can do the simple pass fail here. So yes, pass, and then upload the the checklist. And, and or any notes that you wish to, to put in here. Excellent question. Okay, so to close, um, one, I wanna thank you all for taking time out of your Friday to spend with me on this. I hope you found um, it valuable as an introduction if you weren't already aware of NFPA 1851. And I can't emphasize enough, after, you know, when you got time, if, especially if you're the go-to person for PPE management in your organization, Take some time to study this. It's broken down very nicely. It's easy to digest and understand. And then it will likely, as you read it, especially if, you get, if you're passionate about this, you will start seeing ways to not only enhance the overall program in your department, but also to better document it 
And again, the documentation, is there a CYA component to it? Yes, but really it's also a testament to the culture of an organization that we take this seriously. Why? Because we want you to have, at the end, a healthy career, safe career, and a healthy retirement so you hopefully won't be battling, you know, the potential for diseases that occur in this profession. And so this uh, this standard lays it all out to, to get you going in the right direction. And then you're you're a leader of the department, regardless of your rank. I would look at that as, yeah, we're taking this we're taking this seriously, and we've got people spearheading this, regardless of rank, that want to do better for the organization. And uh, you're following something that is a national standard, not just something, you know, made up at your department locally, or just because we want to do it. So you've got some some backing behind it, some oomph behind it as you move forward. So I highly recommend studying that. And I think we should be good. Any questions, anybody? All right. So Sean, I want to if you don't I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but uh, Sean says this is timely information because he's on the cusp of importing our PPE into ER. So if you need help, Sean, let me know. Um, very helpful. Gave me a lot to think about SOP wise. Excellent. Well, good. I'm happy, and I think we've our system. We've got a really good system to help you manage that. And as you read this standard, you'll see, oh, ER can do that for me. Um, it's going to uh, help me adhere to the standard. And so when you go to the chief to say, hey, we've got to step it up, um, he's going to ask you, going to, what's it going to cost? Do I, have to, do I have to invest in more stuff? And you're going to say, well, not exactly, chief. Well, we actually, well, we got to buy an extractor. That's expensive, but we don't have to, from a software perspective, we've got everything we need. So, all right. Well, guys, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Happy Valentine's Day. And uh, we will see you again. Our next presentation, if you take a look at your screen, this is today's NFP 1851. And as you can see, we're trying to focus on how we can help you with these standards. So on February 27th, so basically, not quite two weeks from today, so we'll be back on Thursday, the 27th. We're going to do um, apparatus checks, test, and maintenance that looks at NFPA 1911 and 1915. So you want to get a head start for our next presentation, go check out those two standards. So until then, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you for taking time, and we'll catch you in a couple weeks, everybody.